Hello wonderful person, welcome back to What The Math, this is Anton and today we're continuing with part 6 of creating the awesome space shooter which has no name still but uh, is going to be absolutely horrible when we finish it. Anywho, let's get on with this video and I'm going to quickly summarize what we're going to do today. First we're going to actually troubleshoot the mistake from last part, I'm going to explain to you how I solved it and how you should approach all of your coding in the future. We're also going to use this beautifully created uh, new enemy that I just made with Piscal and uh, we're going to learn how to add enemies to our game and then how to destroy them with our pew pew laser that we added in the last video. This is going to be our first enemy that we add and this one is going to only have one hit point so it's going to basically destroy as soon as we kill it. But firstly, so in the last video this is what was happening. So every time I was trying to fire my gun, which you can hear uh, very well now, if I did it too fast it would actually crash my game. It's a mistake that you see a lot, mostly because basically error 1009 refers to the fact that something is wrong with the collision. Collisions are not registering, something is there and it's not there, or something and, like an object is missing. Uh, and specifically the error mentioned that there were collision mistakes. And so I figured, well, it must be a collision related mistake. I went uh, right after I finished my video, I went into my spacecraft went into collisions and then realized that uh, I didn't actually add the groups to these other directions. The uh, This was actually missing and this is what I had to change and as soon as I changed it to players everything was just fine. Now when you experience a mistake or an error or something is crashing this is how you should think about it. First of all find out you know what is this mistake telling you what is happening and then the, literally if it says collisions go to collisions. If it says uh, it's something to, to do with coding event uh, go into your event and go through all of your syntax and find out if there's actually a mistake somewhere and you'll usually be able to solve it and if nothing else works you can always just go on google and just type your error and what I actually did is I typed this first and read the forum and this uh, here was I believe the uh, stencil forum that actually had, as you can see I've already opened these up, uh, had a lot of people with the same mistake and they had it for different reasons and so that uh, obviously forums are a very good sort of way of trying to solve your uh, problems anyway. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our newly created um, enemy and we're going to export it as a, an animated GIF and save it on our hard drive. So now I'm going to export this into the game or actually I'm going to import it and uh, we're going to name this enemy one. Um, all right, perfect. So this is how you import animated enemies. So this is actually a tutorial uh, that will also cover how to animate your your uh, your enemies, your actors. Because this particular enemy has only one direction all I really need to do is import it and it, as you can see it does it automatically. Now sometimes it actually will ask you so you know how do you want to divide your image and you can kind of select how many uh, frames you have but uh, for most parts, for uh, for most uh, GIF files and also for all of the Pisco images it's automatic, you don't actually have to worry about it and so as you can see I have an animated enemy now which I can totally add into my game. I'm going to add it to scene, this scene right here and we're going to test it uh, using the first level. So let's just put it somewhere. Oh, it's a little bit too small maybe, but you know what? That's okay. It's going to be really hard to see as well. Yeah, I should have made it bigger. And here we go. This is a little bit better. I just ma basically made it twice as big as before. We're going to add like three of them just to test and they're going to stand right there. Um, I should have really chosen a different color maybe because it's going to be hard to see them, but because their eyes are going to be blinking and they're going to be pretty easy to see. Uh, obviously before we start anything, before we actually compile the game, we need to make sure that the enemy collision is perfectly well defined. So we are going to actually change this to actors. This is the actor. And also let's uh, maybe make it a little bit smaller than what it is right now. And I think this looks a little bit better because it's not as big as, as the other box was. And so this is perfect. So now we have an enemy that has a collision box. Um, we need to also make sure that it's not affected by gravity and we want this to rotate. Well, not necessarily. It's just, it's going to just kind of stay there. Um, everything else is fine. And we're going to also write a description. This is a basic enemy, just so we don't forget in case we come back to the game later on. Uh, so for now, let's just see if it's there. And yes, look at that. Perfect. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and scary. Although choosing blue and black for my enemy color was not a good idea. I also am able probably to pass through them. Yeah, I totally can because I, I made sure that the enemy and or uh, sorry actors and players could not collide. But I think if I shoot at it, <laughs> that's awesome. See how the bullet actually moves them. That's because there is a collision between bullets and enemies. 
So, excellent. So now we just have to fi uh, figure something out. We need to, first of all, um, maybe I should include collisions between enemies and myself. Because they will be able to kill me, so maybe I'll include collisions. But we also need to define the destruction of enemies, right? We need to teach our enemy to die every time I shoot a bullet at them. So let's do that first. Now, obviously, this is going to be under events. It's going to be under... Um, collision events, uh, and we're w what we want to do is let's just define a collision between two different groups. Although I guess in this case, the much simpler way is to just do this, member of group or even actor type. And let's just, uh, just for the sakes of making this very specific, let's go with the actor type. Um, the other, these other collisions are more generic, they're more general, that is. Uh, so this is a lot more specific. So here we can say when self is collided with the player bullet, we are going to kill the actor kill self. So that's a pretty simple sort of code. It's basically going to destroy the enemy when it's when it's hit by the bullet. Now, if you want to actually include an explosion, and we can totally do that if I can actually find a good explosion, there's two ways of doing this. I think the easier way is to actually, uh, so once you kill the actor, you can say, create a new actor type, and this can be an explosion uh, actor, which basically just lives for like a second and after the first uh, animation is finished playing, it just kills itself as well. Basically what you can, so what I'm saying is this, create an actor type at the position of self. So this would be X of self and Y of self. And uh, this would be the actor type that we don't actually have here, but it would be called explosion. And the explosion would be created in the position of your killed enemy. But I don't, I'm not going to do this just yet. We might actually do this later on when we're finishing up the game. For now, we just want this to basically die as soon as we hit it with a bullet. And let's test this out. Let's shoot our bullet at one of the enemies and look at that. Boom. All right. Now, we want... We may want to also kill the bullets. I think it's probably best if we actually kill the bullets as well. And as you can see, they actually slow down as soon as they hit the enemy. And we might also want to include it some sort of an explosion sound at least, because that's actually much easier than, than making an animation uh, from scratch. So I'm going to go into Stencil Forge, and just right here, there's actually an explosion already available for us. Let's just download this. And we're going to um, use this. Oh no, it's a super short, not good, but that's perfect for me. I need a super short explosion. Um, we're going to use this for for our basically enemy right here. We're going to say play sounds. Uh, there it is. Play sounds. Which sounds? Well, I want to play explosion on the distraction of self. But now we also need to go into bullets and tell the bullets to die using the same uh, event that we used before. This is an actor type event. So when self hits the enemy, you want to also disappear just like the enemy. You want to basically not be there anymore because otherwise the game is going to be too easy. And let's see how this works now. So now we have our three enemies. They're just standing there, chilling around, and pew! Explosion is working, but the bullet is not disappearing. I possibly made a mistake somewhere. Let's find out where it is. And I think I'm going to just change this from type to a group and change the group to actor. So basically when you collide with any enemy, any actor, you're going to kill yourself. Let's see if this actually helps us. It probably will, but if it doesn't help us, we'll need to figure out if there's some sort of other mistake that's going on. And you know what? Troubleshooting is part of coding, and I personally find it a lot of fun. I actually think troubleshooting and finding your own mistakes is kind of uh, like a, you know, it's a big math puzzle for me and for many, many other coders as well. Okay, <laughs> one bullet killed everyone. Something is going on here. What is happening? And this time... It works. Now, the only thing I changed is this. I actually went um, and did something a little bit different. I erased the other event from the actual bullet, and I'm not sure if maybe this is why it wasn't working. And instead, I added, I added a new line to my enemy event. Uh, so now the enemy has two different things happening. First, it's going to kill itself when the bullet hits it, but then it's also going to kill the last collided actor. And now we're actually going to do something very similar. We're going to create a very similar collision event, using um, actor of type here, and I think I'm going to choose a specific actor, spacecraft. When self collides with a spacecraft, we want to once again kill last collided actor. And this, of course, as you can probably imagine, will kill us if we touch the ship. Uh, so let's, let's see if, uh, if this actually works. All right, so here we go. We're going to shoot down the first ship. It's going to destroy. We're going to shoot down the second ship. It's going to destroy itself. And then we're going to collide. No, I totally forgot to add collisions. 
And what I mean by this is I totally forgot to add a group collision with players. And this is why it wasn't working before, because my actors didn't have a player collision. So now it should definitely work. And here we go. And look at that. I hit the ship, it sort of started moving away, which is kind of cool, but my actual spacecraft has been destroyed. You can actually um, now do something even more complex if you want, and we'll do this near the end of the series, but what you could do now is if you kill the last collided actor, and specifically in this particular event, you could technically pause the game, so the game is now paused, and then switch to some sort of a scene, like a game over scene, with a crossfade and like a cool effects, or you do something a little bit simpler. You can actually just write, or in this case, draw the text that basically says something like game over at a certain position in your scene. We'll do all of this later on when we're actually, you know, finishing up the game. For now, I think this is all I wanted to show you. Basically, we've made an enemy, it has collision events, it dies when we shoot at it, the bullets affect it as well. All of the collisions seem to be working just fine, all of the uh, lasers are shooting just fine, and everything is absolutely perfect. The only thing I'm going to change in the next video is we're going to give our enemy a little bit of artificial intelligence, so now it's going to try to basically catch us. We're going to start thinking about how to add AI to your game, and how to make the game a little bit more entertaining, a little bit more fun, so... Subscribe if you still haven't, and like this video if you enjoyed watching it and if you learned something from it. And in the next video, we're going to basically create something else and add a bit of a more advanced version to our enemy. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later, and as always, bye-bye.